Hello everyone, so this video is about a new update I made to the talent tree system in RPG Builder. We can now have both gathering and crafting trees on top of the initial combat trees or talent trees that were implemented earlier. Very important before we get into it, please watch the initial talent tree video because um, in this previous one I'm explaining a lot of things that I'm not going to cover again in this video. So if you do want to understand everything I'm explaining in this video, you definitely do need to watch the uh, previous one. So let's get into it. Like I said, before we could only have combat trees, which are, you know, your initial, uh, I mean, like your usual talent trees in RPGs and MMORPGs. So for example, in here we could create, uh, I showed in the previous video, we could have a Paramonster tree, Arcanist, and then you attach it to your mage class and so on. But now, quite following the similar workflow, but for example, we can have crafting tree. So if we look at the crafting tree module here, you see that I created a few. One which is about uh, bars, one heavy armors and weapons. But these are of course not attached to classes. These are attached to skills. So if we now go to the blacksmithing uh, skill, you see that we can, each skill can have both crafting and gathering trees. In this case, the blacksmithing one does not have any gathering trees, but it has three crafting trees. And these are the three trees I just showed you, bars, heavy armors, and weapons. So if you do attach these to uh, the blacksmithing tree or any tree, this skill will be visible in your skill book. And once you select this skill, it's going to show you more information about it, like the description and so on. But it will also show you a list of uh, crafting trees, including, you know, all the one you want to assign to it. So, uh, concerning on how they work, it's very simple. Watch the previous video and you will understand. No, but seriously, um, they follow the exact same rules. They have the exact same layout. They work the exact same way with the only difference that, for example, a crafting tree do not, does not have any ability in it. It has crafting recipes. And a gathering tree, as you can see here, does not have any ability or recipe in it. It has resource nodes because, you know, that's pretty much what you need in a gathering tree. So that's the only difference, uh, but other than that, they can all have requirements and they all have the same requirement type. So now I added a few, but you see that if we go to the Paramonster one, we could now require the uh, Firewave ability to um, ask you to know a specific recipe before being possible to learn. So you could require the Copper Bar crafting recipe to be known before being uh, able to unlock the Firewave if you wanted it to. Uh, so that's pretty much it in terms of how, you know, how they look, how they work in the editor. It's the exact same thing as combat tree. Now let's see how they are in game. So let's say we let's, let's make a new, um, fresh character. And now, like I said, you have the skill book UI. So this is, uh, visible in the previous video. So I made about the UI update, but if we now select the blacksmithing, uh, skill, don't pay attention to the overlapping UI here. Um, I'm going to be fixing that very soon. But here you see that we see description, etc, etc. But what we care about is the crafting tree um, part. You see that all the crafting trees assigned to the skill are now visible here and they can be selected. So if I click on it, it is now taking us to the uh, bars crafting tree. And it is, you know, it is showing us the UI and uh, the current nodes and, you know, their current ranks and how much they cost and so on. Just like any um, combat tree. So if you go to talent here, pyromancer, it will now show you the pyromancer tree. I added this uh, back button now, so it's quicker to navigate between those menus. Same for the crafting trees and gathering trees. So now it's taking you back to the skill book. So pretty cool. Now uh, let's see how they work. So if we go to the anvil here, and I click on it, you see that it's empty. Like we don't have any recipes that we can craft yet. But now what about we actually learn a recipe? Let's learn the copper, um, copper bar recipe. Click again, this recipe is now here. Uh, so very cool. I'm going to learn them all. So the iron bar and the gold bar. And now you see that they are all here, but we can't craft them. I would like to craft a copper bar. So now it's taking us to the resource nodes um, part of this video. You see that we have a copper ore here and a iron ore here. So respectively, they give copper ore and iron ore, obviously. Something important to note is that 
Um, if we go to the resource node, we see that copper ores are set to be known automatically, meaning that if I go to mining and look at the gathering tree and we look at ores, we see that ores is already, you know, already known for more character. So we don't have to spend point and learn it, but iron ore isn't. And what does it mean when the iron ore or like rather a resource node is not known? Right now I'm clicking on it and it's not letting us um, gather it. But if I click on copper ore, it is now uh, letting us, you know, uh, use it. So, um, well, I accidentally um, clicked on this uh, plant, but whatever. Now I still cannot uh, use the iron ore. So now let's learn the iron ore recipe. And I can now click on it and get it. And we get some iron ore. So pretty cool. So this is how you use uh, gathering trees. Like you don't have to, if you really don't care about this complex tree system, you could literally just uh, go in the editor um, and go to each of your resource nodes and check the uh, non-automatically checkbox and your players will know them immediately. Like nothing will be required for them to um, gather those things. But if you do want to um, make them, you know, having to learn those recipes or rather resource nodes, then you can. And just like any other tree, uh, right now, when we learn the iron ore, you see that there was absolutely no requirement. So we just needed to have enough points to learn it. But we could have required many, many things. So yeah, all those things could have been required. So that's a way for you to make some really complex um, crafting and resource, uh, resource node trees. So now we go to the iron bar and um, we can craft it because we have one iron ore. So pretty cool. Let's craft it. But you see that the craft time now is very, very long. Like this is taking like four seconds or something like this. Let me get some more um, iron ore. But I would like to, you know, get better at crafting this um, this uh, iron bar and possibly, you know, uh, make it craftable faster. Maybe it giving me more uh, crafting bar or costing me less or something. So um, if you look at the crafting recipe and you go to iron bar you see that it has ranks copper bar and gold bar only have one rank but for this video i set up iron bar to have a few so the first rank is what we are currently having as you see here um we see that we are rank one out of three and it's taking indeed four seconds to craft and so on but um if we look at the um Rank two, it's going to take two seconds, and rank three, it's going to take one second. So let's go to rank two and select the um, iron bar craft, and you see it's a bit faster already. Now let's learn the last rank, and we do not have enough points. So let me uh, quickly give myself some points. And um, go back to the blacksmithing UI and learn some, um, learn the last rank of the iron bar. Very cool. So um, if we now go to the iron bar, you see that it's very quick. So of course, this is a very, you know, basic example. We just reduced the craft time um, duration, but this is just for this video. This is just to give you an idea on how you can, you know, let your um, players become better at certain things, including recipes. So we just modified the crafting duration for this video, but for example, the rank one could have gave you um, iron bar only, but the rank two could have gave you a second item and maybe this item only had a 10% chance to be uh, given and maybe it only had a count on one and it could be anything, a training axe. Of course, it doesn't make much more sense, but um, it's okay. But otherwise also you could have, for example, um, Rank one requires a uh, two iron ore to be crafted, but rank two uh, requires only one. So all those things can be customized and you can have as many ranks as you want in each recipe. The exact same thing goes for the gathering trees um, and for the resource node. So if we look at copper ore here, we have only one rank and you see that we have distance, gather time, respawn time. But now if I add a new rank and um, 
we can look at this and for example it could take you know instead of two it could take one second to gather it could respond faster and um it could give you more experience when you gather it the respond time thing is actually pretty cool meaning that um your player could specialize in a specific specific resource node and have it you know rip up more often in the world and so on. it's really up to you what you decide to do with that i'm just here you know to give you as much possibility as possible but um that's it so that's pretty much all i wanted to show for the tree system uh the fact that you know you can start with not being able to use or gather specific things but now when you um learn it in your trees you can now gather them uh also of course you can unlearn them so if i go here and unlearn the iron ore i now not, um once again cannot harvest it anymore so that's pretty much it same for the recipes recipes can be unlearned so if i go here and unlearn those two um and go to the anvil now the uh, the only visible one is iron bar that's pretty much it pretty uh, long already for this kind of video but i hope um it was clear enough I hope you like it and let me know if you have any suggestion as always and thank you for watching. See you in the next video.